Okay, so we're on to step three, which is calculating our IZ, which is the current carrying capacity of the cable in the installed conditions. Okay, and we're going to use this formula down here, which is the current carrying capacity of the cable, the IZ, is equal to the rating of the protective device, the IM, divided by derating factors or correction factors multiplied together. So we'll go through that in detail in the next slide. When we say correction factors, what we're, what we're talking about is external influences on the current carrying capacity of the cable. So for example, if we've got a cable in a loft which is clipped to a joist and it's completely covered in insulation, and then we've got one cable which is clipped to a wall in a garage directly, then the cable clipped to the wall in the garage is subject to less heat, isn't it, than the one that's in insulation. And heat creates more resistance, doesn't it? So if the resistance is up, then the current carrying capacity of the cable is going to be down, isn't it? So we're going to apply this, this theory straight through on our two circuits, select our correction factors, and then we're going to fill out this next part of the formula. We're going to carry this information through onto the next slide so you can see this, and we'll analyse these two circuits. So let's do it. So here we go. We've got our two circuits, lighting circuit and radial circuit on this side. We've got our formula at the top that we're going to use. And we've got these three tables that I've extracted from the on-site guide here, all in Appendix F. Okay, so let's read this now. C is a rating factor to be applied where the installation conditions differ from those for which values of current carrying capacity are tabulated in this appendix. In simple terms, what they're saying there is the current carrying capacity tables inside the on-site guide or inside BS7671, the big brown book, those cable cur current carrying capacities are calculated and are tabulated in there based on the cables being tested at a certain degree in certain conditions which are stipulated in that book if you read carefully and they're saying if the cable is any other conditions if the ambient temperature is any larger if the grouped if it's in insulation if it's a different type of fuse this all affects the current carrying capacity of the cable okay so let's go through are two circuits and we'll go through these as we go these two tables down here especially this one I'll put this grouping one down here just for you to look at we're not actually going to include CG for grouping in this but I just want to show you that it's there okay so let's go now let's choose this one first and let's analyze this circuit and see what information is going to be useful on here for us for getting correction factors out of this so straight away I can see this we've got a 60898 circuit breaker so that's going to be useful for using our CF correction factor. We've got an ambient temperature of 40 degrees. So we're gonna come down here to this CA for ambient temperature table. And then we've got the cable type here, 70 degree flat twin cable, which is gonna be useful for working out which type of cable we're applying our ambient temperature factor to. So let's go with this. So CA, CA. On this circuit, it's equal to 40 degrees Celsius, okay? So let's have a look. We've got 70 degree flat twin copper cable, thermoplastic cable that is, and we've got 60898. We've got 40 degrees. So CA, 40 degrees. Right. Let's go down here. Ambient temperature, 40 degrees. Let's circle this. And we've got a 70 degree thermoplastic cable. Yep. Yeah. And that means our correction factor is going to be 0 0.87. So it's as simple as that. Just navigating the table and getting our correction factor. Let's look again. We've got a certain type of fuse. So CF. They're the only two we're going to include in our calculations. So we've got 60898 protected device. Let's read this. CF, for the type of protected device, where the protected device is a semi-enclosed fuse to BS3036, CF equals 0 0.725. And for all other devices, CF is 1. So we're not using a 3036 fuse, are we? So our CF is going to be equal to 1. Right, we'll just circle that there. Okay. So we're going to use 1. Even though it seems ridiculous, we put it in there so we look like we know what we're doing. Right, fine. So let's move on now to this side and extract our correction factors for this side. And we'll do the same on each side, then we'll do our calculations. So again, we've got a CA. Our CA this time, let's have a look, is 35 degrees. Slightly different, a bit cooler in there. So 35 degrees. So let's have a look. Same type of cable, 70 degree flat twin and earth cable. So let's look again. So we're at 70 degree cable and we're at 35 degrees this time, right? So that means our correction factor is going to be 0 0.94. Let's put that in, 0 0.94. And let's quickly put this one in, CF. We're not using a 3036 fuse here, are we? We're using a 61009 
So we know from what we just spoke about a minute ago, CF is going to equal 1. Right, fine. So like I said, we're not including the grouping factor, but it's worth being aware of that one. And if you're wondering where I got these tables from, it actually says here, doesn't it? For ambient temperature, C table F1, done. Same with the grouping, C table F3, F3. And if you just flip the pages in the on-site guide, they'll be right there. Okay, so let's calculate this now. Let's do it. So we've got our IZ for this side is equal to our IN, which in this case is 6 amps, and we're going to divide that by our correction factors multiplied together. So we've got 0 0.87 multiplied by one. Stick that in brackets so our calculator knows what we're asking it to do. And that's gonna give us 6.89 amps. So let's round that to seven amps. Fine, so our IZ for this side, for this circuit, is gonna be equal to seven amps. Perfect, now let's do this side. So our IZ on this side, is going to be equal to our IN, which in this case is 20 amps, isn't it? We know that that's our rate of our protected device. And we're going to divide it by our correction factors multiplied again. So 0 0.94 times 1. Put that in brackets in our calculator so it knows what we're asking again. And that's going to be equal to 21.27 amps. So let's round that to 21 amps. Okay. So we've done both sides, haven't we? We've worked out now our current carrying capacity of the cables in the installed conditions. The radial circuit is going to need to take 21 amps. And the lighting circuit, the cable we choose, is going to need to take 7 amps. So this is going to help us in the next stage select our cable. So all we've achieved here, really, is we've worked out now the cable which we select has to be able to carry 7 amps okay, in these conditions. So that's what we've done, the current carrying capacity of the cable in the installed conditions. Let's move on to the next step.